What's going on, everyone? My name is Burke, Coach New Impact is bringing the Season 4 Draft Analysis for the ISL. Uh, unfortunately, I said I was going to be able to do a Season 3 postseason analysis kind of thing. Unfortunately, I just didn't have the time. We really wanted to get the season underway uh, and finished. You know, we wanted to do one more season before Gen 7 comes out. And so we started this up, like, almost immediately because this will take us to somewhere around October. And then about a month later, you know, the game comes out. So uh, we figured we'll start as soon as we can. And the fact that we expanded and added a beta division, so we split up. Before last season, we just had 16 people. This t this season, we split up in 12 and 12. Uh, the alpha division and the beta division. I'm in the alpha division, and uh, it's going to work where uh, if you come in the bottom four for alpha division, you have the bottom two get relegated to beta, and the ninth and tenth places play the third and fourth places in the beta for relegation and promotion. So we don't want to get there, but you know. Uh, but a quick analysis of last season: we won. I went nine and three plus twenty-six, so yay and things. And then if I include my playoffs, I went out eleven and three with a plus thirty thirty-two differential. I, I think around there. So that's cool. No, thirty-two, thirty, thirty-three differential. So an average of a three-zero win uh, per game. So cool. And that was a lot better than I did second season. Like the regular season, I did so much better than season two, and it was great because I, I think I finally realized what my play style is and how I can draft that. And I think I really showcased that season three. So uh, this season, um, last season I had first pick. This season I have 12th pick. So I I still have a wheel pick, which is really nice. I would prefer first or last just because. You know, you can build your team a little bit better based on, uh, you know, the fact that I can pick two things in a row. So near the front, near the back, middle is kind of meh. But this season I last picked, so that was cool. And I decided to go a little bit experimental this season, try some things I never used before. I have a few things that I have used in league format actually before, so it, it's kind of a mix. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the team's interesting at the very least. So anyway, uh, I'm going to try to keep this video kind of short, but you can already see I'm rambling on and on. But first round pick. I was really surprised to get this, and at the same time I was very unsurprised to get this, because in beta it went undrafted, and in alpha no one seemed to even look at this as even remotely a threat, which is really weird because this was a mod that was previously banned, and then we look at this and say, eh, it's probably not going to do that much. First round pick, and then somehow I didn't get sniped at all throughout this draft except for my last round pick. But first round, I picked up Deoxys Speed. Base 103, the Deoxys Speed. The nickname Base 103 is because at max speed timid, I outspeed Scarf Base 103s. So that's really, really damn fast. And it's a Deoxys Speed. Its stats, I think, are really well placed. The HP's kind of let it down at 50, but it's got 95, 95 in the offenses, uh, 90s in the defenses, and 180 speed. So even though it's not incredibly offensive, uh, at 95s, you know, it's not like wall breaker ish. Uh, and it's only got 90s in the defenses. It's more bulky than it seems, and it hits harder than it seems because it's base 180 speed. Having that amount of speed means I never have to run max speed if I don't want to. Uh, and that means I can put all that in HP, I can run modest natures or bolt, uh, adamant natures, so I can run plus attack natures and be able to just dump everything into HP, so it makes it surprisingly bulky. And the fact that I don't have to put any HP, it's not like I don't put anything in, in speed and then I don't have speed uh, common mons, I still have speed, max speed base 130s with the speed boosting nature. So a Jolly Crobat does not outspeed a min speed, yeah, speed. I'm saying speed a lot. So I decided to pick this up because there were, th my plan is with Deoxys, to uh, prove that it is actually broken and get it rebanned. If by the end of the season it gets rebanned, then I'm going to be so happy uh, because then I completed my goal. If I don't get it rebanned, then, well, you know, I tried. But it's got a really diverse move pool, and this is going to, this is also something that's going to, I'm going to have to be a little creative with because some of it does rely on setup, and I got to be used to setting up, you know, with like Nasty Pot or something like that. 
And the fact that it has a really diverse move pool, and both physical and special, and the fact that I can just run whatever item I want on this and uh, be able to run a very effective mixed offense because it's 95s in both, which isn't amazing, but it isn't terrible. So Deoxys Speed, really, really versatile mod. I mean, I can run it offense, especially offensive, especially, uh, especially offensive, physically offensive. I can run it as like a, a lead set with stealth rocks and spikes. I can do a whole lot of things with this. And I really like the Oxus Speed, so we're gonna see how it works. I've never used it because I don't play Ubers, so. But I think it, I think it's gonna definitely work different than the way it works in Ubers and it works in League format. And we're gonna see how see how it does. So hopefully the Oxus Speed can uh, put a lot of work in this season. And to pair up with that, I'm I picked something up in the second round as I used last season, something I used all last season, and that is Quinfernate the Infernape. Don't really have to go too much over this. It's 76 HP, 71 in the defenses, 104 is in the offenses, and 108 speed. Uh, Infernape I used really well last season. I, I, I at least, at least I, like, I think I did. And I know how to use it well. It is another mixed offensive mon, having the same stat in both offenses. Its speed is pretty good at 108, obviously no 180, but it's very versatile. Again, this can be this is another rocker. This can this gives me switch initiative, which I didn't have in Deoxys Speed. It gives me more priority, more setup options. And I used it well last season. And this was actually the Infernape was the last thing on my draft plan. I looked at my draft plan and I said I have enough points for an S, and I need a firefighting. So I was like, why not just pick up Infernape again? And to be honest, I thought it was going to go a little bit soon. You know, I didn't think I was actually going to be get it getting it. But seeing as uh, it was now S rank. Uh, Mentor is a little bit less desirable to some people, but I was like, Infernape is one of my MVPs, so I can definitely use this again. The team's different, I don't know if it's going to shine as much, but we're going to definitely try, because it's such a great mod. It hits really hard, and it is fast, and people, I think, underestimate, because they look at the 104s in the offense like, ah, it's not that great, but then you slap a band or specs on this thing, and it's gonna hit really damn hard. Life Orb, my, my like favorite set was always the choice bandit set, or Life Orb set, which is fully physically offensive to just kind of break through uh, some walls, and it does that really well. So I'm really looking forward to using Infernape again. I think it's gonna do well, and uh, Infernape, yes. Good. And things. I don't really know what to say. So 20, 22 picks go by before my next wheel pick. And I decided, you know, let's, I've got this trend of offense going, and I said, you know, let's continue that. And I decided to pick up a really strong physical wall breaker in A, which I'm not too excited about using. Well, I've seen it used and I don't like it. But at the same time, I have always wanted to use it, and I hate going against it because of how threatening it is, and that is Mammoth Swine. So Hodor the Mammoth Swine. Uh, it's stats 110 in HP, 130 in attack, 80 in defense, 70 in special attack, 16 special defense, and 80 in speed. This thing hits really damn hard. And it's another stealth rocker, so I picked up three stealth rockers in three rounds. Still not has a removal yet, but we will get there. And it is a wall breaker. It is a wall breaker. And I I didn't I don't like Mammoth Swine that much. I don't I used it briefly in a tournament in which I had like seven months to choose from and it didn't do a lot of work for me but then again my team was crap so it wasn't going to do a lot of work it's too slow and the fact that Mammoth Swine when it gives me more priority and I love having priority uh, it, you know it's a stealth rocker it can do a lot of damage to a lot of teams however I think it's just a little bit overrated it, it can do a lot of work but at the same time its speed kind of lets it down and it's not despite that 110 HP it can't take that many hits because of its typing. I know it has thick fat so that it helps with the fire, it actually resists ice because of thick fat, but still, it can't seem to take the hits it needs to and then fire back with a big hit because it just dies. But the fact that it fit my team so well on paper, at the end of my draft, again, this was one of the last things I decided to choose, I just felt like it was actually going to be able to do something this season. I hope it does. And Mammoth Swine... Again, yeah, not my favorite, but I think it can work, uh, especially around the team I made, because I do have a decent amount of speed control on this team, so I could potentially get it to work well, but 
we'll see. I I'm, I have a heavy bit of skepticism for Mammoth Swine in lead format, but I wanted to use it. I've wanted to always use it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it to shine, but I again, I've never really seen anyone get it to shine, so we'll see. This is like, this, this I would say is probably my least favorite pick out of everything on my team. It's the one I just went with, uh, I, I guess, I guess it can work. So we'll see how it does, uh, but you know, Hodor the Mammoth Swine, it's really strong, it's going to threaten a lot of teams and they're going to have to prep for that, uh, which means I don't have to prep for that, which is one of the biggest reasons I picked it up, it's just like, I don't have to prep for it, and prepping for that is always a problem. So. Uh, for the next pick in the wheel, I decided I needed to pick up a little bit of bulk because I went offense, offense, offense. Uh, I need a wall, to say the least. I need at least one. And so I decided to pick a wall that, again, I'm not a huge fan of and not because I don't like the mod. I've used it in OU a lot. It's really good. It is very good. But I never like having walls of four times weaknesses. And I decided to say, eh, I'll break that rule. For this season because I really want to try it and that is Ferrothorn. Nigel the Ferrothorn. Nigel because Nigel Ferrothornberry. Yeah y'all can hate me now. My nickname is terrible. But I'm not a fan of mobs with four times fire weaknesses or four times weaknesses in general especially walls. Like offensive mons, mm, like season two I had Scizor but that's an offensive mod. And yeah Things can tack on HP fire, but I can at least bullet punch to kill. This I'm not outspeeding anything with. Uh, it's got 74 in HP, 94 in attack, 131 in defense, 54 in special attack, 116 in speed, uh, speed, 116 in special defense, and 20 in speed. So it's not outspeeding shit. You know, it's slow AF, which is fine. You know, I got a whole bunch of fast mods. Um, but. It does have, while it does have that 4 times fire weakness, it can still tank HP fires really well. It gives me my 4th Stealth Rocker, because I wanted a wall with Stealth Rock. So, th so far I had 3 offensive mons with Stealth Rock, now I've got 4 mons with Stealth Rock because... I needed all those Stealth Rockers. I need them. I need as many Stealth Rockers as I can. But it also gives me another Spiker. So now I've got 2 Spikers, I have the option for Hazard Stack. Uh, I do pick up a Toxic Spiker later, so... I have the option, if I choose to do that one week, has it stack my opponent. It's a really reliable wall, though. It is really damn bulky. I mean, 131 and 116, and a not so bad HP stat 74. That works. That works very well. It can tank a lot of hits. It's got a really good ability in, you know, Iron Barb, so it's, you know, it, it deters uh, U-turning because you switch in onto a U-turner. Iron Barbs, they get damage, more damage than what uh, Ferrothorn's going to take. It also gets a lot of utility moves, you know, Leech Seed, Thunder Wave, things like those that actually will help Ferrothorn uh, pair well with some of my other mods, like Mammoth Swine, you know, Thunder Waving things, and the Mammoth Swine doesn't have to be Scarf. Uh, overall, there's not really too much to say about Ferrothorn. It's a reliable wall. It is bulky and one problem, though, you will see as we get later, is Ferrothorn and Mammoth Swine is the start of some fighting weakness to my team, which last season I had as well. I had a little bit of a fighting weakness. I cover it up somewhat, and I cover it up decently well, but it's still there. And uh, so Ferrothorn, you know, it does have that fighting weakness and fire weakness, but it's a good mon. It can work well. I'm looking forward to using it. So that was my last, that was my second wheel pick. Another 22 picks come around, and now I gotta start picking up a little bit of bulk, some hazard removal, things like that. Because I haven't really prioritized hazard removal, but I didn't think my uh, my preferred hazard removal option this season was going to be taken. And that was uh, Tentacruel. Squillium the Tentacruel. It's got a really good placement of stats, 80 in HP, 70 in attack, 65 in defense, 80 in special attack, 120 special defense, 100 in speed. It is my dedicated spinner. It is a toxic spiker. So now I've got all the options for hazard stack as well as hazard removal and rapid spin so I don't have to defog away all of my stuff. And it's a good special sponge. You know, that 120 in special defense is really nice. It's got 
passable offenses in 70 and 80 in attack and special attack. So it can do things. I've seen Tentacruel run offensively. And overall, I really like Tentacruel. I wanted to use it because it's a reliable spinner. It's not, it absorbs toxic spikes immediately, so that's always great. And while it is neutral to Stealth Rocks and it's not immune to spikes, it is still a reliable spinner as well as reliable uh, toxic spiker. Its typing is really nice. The fact that it's water and poison, I get and you know stab scald, stab sludge bomb or sludge wave. That's really nice. And Tentacruel, I think, fit the team well. It's a fighting resistance, so that's what I needed a fighting resistance. Although I'm going to pick up a fighting weakness right after. Uh, it's a fairy resistance, which I didn't currently have at that point. Although I do pick up a well, I do I did have Ferrothorn, so I was saying like, where's my steel type? It was Ferrothorn. So now you know I have some fairy resistances. Although fairies a lot of time can carry HP fire just for the Ferrothorn, and it's got a hundred speed, so it's not slow. I can run a bolt, you know, like a speedy wall kind of thing. I can run really speedy offense. So it's got offensive options. They don't do them like particularly amazingly, but they can work in certain setups. But I, I see this as fitting as a nice special wall as well as a uh, maybe mixed wall and a hazard stacker. So I'm looking forward to using Tentacruel. And then to pair up Tentacruel, I decided to pick up something that I didn't get to pick up last season because it got sniped from me. And I wanted a Cleric, as well as a Wish Passer. So I decided to pick up Umbreon. Clarence the Umbreon. Uh, it's Umbreon. It is fat. Like, this thing has 95 in HP, 65 attack, 110 in defense, 60 in special attack, 130 in special defense, and 65 in speed. It's slow, it is incredibly bulky, but it is another fighting weakness. But I pick up another fighting resist, another reliable fighting resistance later, so I think that's all right. But it's a very good mixed wall. The fact that you don't really have to run much in special defense, you can run a lot in defense and whatnot. It gets some utility. Uh, it gets some setup in curse. Curse baton pass is a thing, and it gets you know wish passing as well as. Uh, you know, heal bell, so that's really nice, and that's what I wanted in it. It's a dedicated wish passer and heal beller. I don't really see me using like curse setup that much to baton pass out into something, maybe like Mammoth Swine. I don't know, that'd be kind of funny, but I think Mammoth Swine gets cursed by itself. So, yeah. Overall, though, I don't really have too much to say about Umbreon. It, again, it, it's a very fat mon, so I've got a lot of, I got a lot of bulk in my team, and I pick up one more bulky mon. I pick up one more later. Granted, I have some bulky offense, but I pick up a more like kind of just Wally kind of thing, and then the rest is just mostly offense at this point forward. So that's Clarence the Umbreon. It's an Umbreon. You know what it does? It, it's annoying and it is very hard to take down, but it's really good. So that was the third wheel pick. Going to my fourth wheel pick, I wanted a. I want to pick up my Mega because some teams hadn't picked up their Mega yet, and I was starting to get a little bit worried. Because if my Mega got picked up, then I was kind of screwed. Because then I had to pick up from another uh, B Mega, and there weren't that many that I wanted. In fact, there was one I wanted, which was the one I picked up. And so I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't get the one I, one I needed. And if I didn't, then my draft kind of was a little bit screwy, which you could say is was a problem with my draft plan and my drafting that I didn't pick it up earlier. But I didn't think this was going to go, really. Because... It doesn't have much use. There's someone in the GBA using it, but you know, no one really looked at it as the threat it can be in my league. But I decided to want to use it because uh, I've seen Tup use it, and I've seen him use it well, and I really wanted to use it myself. And that is Mega Pidgeot. So Storm Eagle, the Mega Pidgeot. Mega Pidgeot has even less to say about it. You know, it's got good stats: 83 in HP, 80 in attack and defense, 135 in special attack, 80 in special defense, and 121 speed. It's a pretty decently fast Mega, but it's there to click Hurricane. Let's be honest. It's a Hurricane button. You know, no guard Hurricane. I'm just gonna keep clicking Hurricane and keep clicking it and keep clicking it. It's not the most reliable Mega in the world. It's not one that I'm just gonna be able to bring to every single match because it's gonna work. It's not. It's not gonna work in every single match. But 
it's going to put a lot of pressure on my opponents because maybe they've got a counter to this that they weren't necessarily going to have to run against my team, but just because I have the threat of a Mega Pidgeot, they're going to have to run it. It's got some nice utility in Switch Initiative, U-Turn. It, it gets Tailwind, I'm pretty sure, and it gets Defog. So I got a Defogger, although I don't really want to run into the Defogger most weeks, but it doesn't have the best move pool to be able to, you know, run it. You would you don't need enough moves on this to not run Defog. I don't think I'm explaining this right. Doesn't get a lot of moves. So one of the moves you can run is Defog. I think that's about it. Yeah, it gets very limited special move pool, Hurricane Heat Wave, and then Hidden Powers. Which is really unfortunate because if it got some like Focus Blast, I think this thing would be so damn good because then you didn't have to run things like HP fighting. You run Focus Blast and then maybe Hidden Power Ground. Which would work really well. But no, Mega Pidgeot, I think, can do a lot of work. It is a very offen especially offensive mon, and the fact that it has stab hurricanes that never miss, that's very hard to wall, and a lot of teams are going to have, I think, problems dealing with that. Uh, because you don't really switch into hurricanes, plus that 30% chance to confuse. It's a hard move to switch into. And you need bulky electric types to switch into it well. Because even, like, bulky... Like, a lot of bulky rock types aren't uh, specially defensive, besides, like, Tyranitar. And you would need the sand... And But if you get the sand set up, then, you know, that's a thing. But a lot of steel types don't switch into this well, because then Heat Wave's a thing. So, like, the only steel type that really switches into this well is Heatran. Because, you know, it's a Munifier. So there's limited switch-ins, and it looks fun to use. So, I can see Mega Pidgeot putting a lot of work. I'm going to try to get it to do a lot of work. But, yeah. You know, again, this is what I said. This seems experimental for me. It's a lot of things I haven't used. Most of these stuff I haven't used. Mega Pidgeot, I used to use in UU somewhat, and then it got banned, and then I stopped using it, because in OU it's kind of underwhelming. So, you know. That is Storm Eagle and Mega Pidgeot. And then going into the next pick, I decided I needed a fairy, and I decided to go with a low tier fairy, and that is Aromatisse. So, which doctor? The, Ro the Aromatisse. I'm not a huge fan of Aromatisse. It's good. I think it's good at what it does. It's a it's a wall that can't be taunted, so that's really nice. It's slow wall that can't be taunted, which is even nicer. And it gives me some utility options, Trick Room if I wanted it, but I don't really see myself running Trick Room because a lot of my offense is fast, so Trick Room might not be the best option out there. But it gives me another Wish Passer, it gives me another Heal Beller, or Aromatherapy, or, or something like that. It, it, it gets cleric -y options. And it's a fairy, so I now have a dragon resist in Ferrothorn, I have a dragon immunity in uh, what was it, Aromatisse. Its stats are not too bad, 101 in HP, 72 in both attack and defense, 99 in special attack, 89 in special defense, and 29 in speed. So it's really bulky, it can take a lot of hits. It's not the most offensive mod, but 99 in special attack is pretty good. Moonblast does hit decently hard, and if you don't resist it, then it, you know, it's not passive by any means. You know, my walls aren't passive aside from Umbreon, which is nice. They can do some damage. I know Aromatisse can actually hit decently hard, especially if you invest in special attack. 99 special attack is not bad. So, I mostly picked it up because it's a fairy, though. Like, let's be real here. I wanted a fairy, Aromatisse is there, and I wanted a fairy that's not super passive, like Togetic. And I wanted something that, you know, resists fighting, although Togetic would be a better fighting resist. Aromatisse does the job well enough that uh, I'm not... Because it's, I'm not terribly, terribly worried about fighting types, although I still don't like switching into them. But Aromatisse can put in a lot of work. It's very, very, very bulky, and that's what I needed. So, 22 more picks go by. And I'm at my last wheel pick, and then I pick up one 11th round pick, which not many people are picking in the 11th round because a lot of franchise picks were done. So there's like seven picks, six picks in round 11 instead of 12, which was nice. So I can, I basically had free random whatever I wanted in the uh, in the last round. But in the last wheel pick, again, I still hadn't been sniped yet, which was amazing. I, I hadn't been sniped this entire time, so my draft plan went off without a hitch. And in the last round last wheel pick. I wanted a dragon. I still didn't have a dragon. I have for a B tier dragon. And I used the season one, but I didn't really use it to good effect because I use it defensively um, to deal with Victini. And this season I decided, you know, let's pick it up again. Let's really try to use it well. 
let's get some kills, because I didn't really get kills season 1. And that is Tyrantrum. And it's going to be named Blue Lines, it's going to be shiny, because Shroom really likes Blue Lines and Tyrantrum, so... That's why the, the mo all the pictures haven't been shiny, but this one is shiny, because I'm specifically going to use it as a shiny Tyrantrum. It's got really... it's really good. It's really offensive, and it's got 82 in HP, 121 in attack, 119 in defense, 69 in special attack, 59 in special defense, 71 in speed. It's not specially defensive, but I've got a lot of specially defensive mons, so I wasn't really too worried. It's really physically defensive. Rock Dragon is actually pretty good typing, resisting, uh, resisting fire four times, which is something I didn't really have many resistances to. I had Tentacruel, but this gives me a four times fire resist, which is really nice. And the fact that it's got that 121 attack with Head Smash and no recoil is what I love. And I'm going to be clicking Head Smash a lot. That, that's the main goal for this, Head Smash. Head Smash things, Head Smash them hard, because that's what, that's what Tyrantrum does, it Head Smashes. It's... 121 in attack isn't like the most wall breakery, but the fact that it gets really strong stab and outrage and Head Smash is why it's so powerful. That really strong, high base power stab is what really... Uh, is hard to switch into. And I've got so many things on my team that you look at and just like, what are, like, Tyrantrum is one of those things that you look at the opponent's team and you ask them, what are your switch ins? Well, on my team, I look at another person's team and I say, what are your switch ins to Mamoswine, Tyrantrum, and Mega Pidgeot? The answer is not much. So, I'm really looking forward to using Tyrantrum. I didn't use it that well season one, but three seasons later, I think I'm much better. I can use mods more effectively. And while I haven't used it much in standard nor in league format, I really wanted to use it again because I know how much work this thing can do. And so, Tyrantrum is back. Well, Tyrantrum's cousin from first season is back. The shiny one is back. Blue lines. And to finish off my last wheel pick, I need an electric type, and I decided to go with probably one of the best electric types in uh, D tier because I needed a D pick. And I decided to go with one of the best in Electivire. I didn't really need the speed of Electabuzz, but I wanted the power that is Electivire. Because it has 75 in HP, 123 in attack, 67 in defense, 95 in special attack, 95 in special, 85 in special defense, and 95 in speed. So it's it had that nice speed tier where I wanted something in the 90s, and Electivire was it. Because I went from 100 to 80, and I needed something in between there. So Electivire kind of fit that, although I would have liked something around base 90 speed to really break it up nice, but you know, it happens. There's not really many things between uh, base 95 and base 90. There's a lot of things at base 90, but not 91, 92, 93, 94. That's just not a common speed tier. So I don't think it's going to matter as much. Although 100 is a common speed tier, and there are some things at 99, 98 that I would not want to be able to speed group to 80. Either way, it, it's a Volt Switcher. It is actually very, very powerful on the physical side. 95 special attack is nothing to really sneeze at, and it does get a decent special move pull. It gets a decent physical move pull. It gives me initiative. I've seen it used. I really like it. I've wanted to use Electivire for a while. I really wanted to use Electivire for a while. And I didn't say it's nickname. It's High Voltage. I, I think I missed that, uh, that nickname. But Electivire is really good. I think it is a little bit too good for D tier because yeah, it's an NU in standard, but in elite format, you know, we don't really take into account we do take into account Smogon tiers, but you know, we change them a lot. And I think Electivire is one of those things that should have been moved up because it is decently fast, it hits really hard, it can tank hits. Uh the the defense isn't great, but you know, you put an Asalphus on the thing on this thing. 75 85 isn't terrible. And the fact that it has base 123 attack with a decent physical move pool, although it's physical electric stab is wild charge, which wild charge isn't even that great of a move. It kind of lets it down, but it does get a diverse move pool, and it can get me a lot of initiative. It can punch some holes, which is what I'm looking at. And the fact that it has an ability in motor drive, so I had an electric immunity in Mamoswine, and now I've got another electric immunity in Electivire. So I got electric immunities. Uh, which is really nice. You always want at least one electric community, a ground type, maybe something with Volt Absorb, or in this case, Motor Drive. And I think it's going to be able to put in a good shift of work against a lot of teams. Like, it's a D tier pick that I can see being brought to a lot of games. 
It's not one of those mons that eh, it might be good in certain matchups. This is just a mon that can be good in a lot of matchups, which is something that a lot of D tiers don't offer. But I think this one does. So we'll see how often I can use it. I'm really looking forward to uh, trying it out in some battles. But that is High Voltage the Electivire. And then the last round pick is... I didn't have to go like 22 more picks because there's like 10 picks, you know, 11 picks in round 10. And then there was, you know, like 4 picks before me in round 11 because, you know, a lot of people franchised. And I'm looking at a fighting weakness and I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. Because there wasn't really... I had enough points for another mod in C. But there wasn't really much I wanted. The mod I wanted for my last round pick got sniped for me, and that's Meloetta. Because Meloetta I never used, but I, I always look at it and I'm like, that is something that I think would be a lot of fun to use. Because I, it just looks cool. And I think it's much better in League than it is in Standard. But you know. And I, I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, I don't know what I want. And then... One of my, one of the other people in the league, uh, Gavin, he messaged me and said, "Go for M Miss Mages. and I'm like, you know, it's another D pick, and unfortunately, you know, I'm gonna have some points left over, which I never liked to have points left over, but you know, it happens. And Miss Mages is a really good ghost type, so I decided to pick up Miss Mages, Ghost Hat, the Miss Mages. I know, amazing nicknames. I'm really good at nicknames, and it stats 60s in HP, attack, and defense. So 60 in the physicals, uh, 105s in the specials." and then 105 in speed. So it's it's got some speed to it. It has some bulk to it on the special side. It's got a diverse move pool, and it's a fighting immunity. So I now have Deoxys Speed, which resists. I have uh, Tentacruel, which resists. I have Aroma Teach, which resists, and Miss Medius, which is immune. So I do have some fighting resistances, although I do have quite a few, few fighting weaknesses. It is something that I don't see being brought very often just because a lot of my mods are, uh, work well in the higher tiers, and Miss Magius, it was kind of an afterthought, you know, once it, once it was told to me, I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to pick. And it can be used, It Offensive Ghost is a very good typing, and Base 105 Special Attack isn't bad. It's not amazing, but that, that's what you go with the D tier, you don't get something that's really, really amazing. Um, and the other, well, the other D tier I was looking at, but it was another pure psychic type, and I didn't really want to go two pure psychic types. Was going to be Masharna, because that thing's actually really damn good. But I was like, I, that's just another... That's really fat, but it's it's another pure psychic, and I didn't want one of those. And so, I didn't have a ghost type, and Miss Magius, I think, can fit the team. Hopefully, I think it can work. But my team, overall, I think is looking pretty good. I can make changes to it, and some of the things that just... I look at them like, eh, they're like Mammoth Swine. But, which is odd, because that's my a, my like third round pick, and I'm just like, eh, Mammoth Swine. I don't really... So, that is going to be the team for this season. Obviously, there are free agency and trades I can do midway through, but I, I don't like taking part in them. Last season, I only made one, and this season, I don't really see myself making any. I make, might make one or, one or so, depending on what other people do. But, I'm really looking forward to this season. Uh, my first battle is actually very soon. I have to play my opponent before week one actually starts because he's going away. And uh, we'll see how we do. Uh, I'm This season I'm just hoping I can not go bottom four so I don't get relegated. But that's about it. You know, I, I've won, you know, bragging a little bit. You know, I've won two seasons in a row. I'm not looking to... If I win again, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> you know, third season third time season champion something or other I can't I can't talk right now I'm very congested for some reason and if I can that'd be great if I don't oh well it happens but I'm just looking to not go bottom four but my main goal for the season is to get Deoxys speed banned again by getting a lot of kills with it and hopefully you know uh, I can do well this season I really want to do well I I guess aside from bottom four if I can go above uh, five, five. So if I go six, five, then I've hit my goal for the season. I want to go positive. Again, if I make the playoffs, fantastic. And if I win again, that's just amazing. But we'll see what happens. But that's all I got for today. My name is Burke, coaching the Patriots. I'll see y'all next time.